of this event is let's keep things moving. I know that, you know, all of us are pretty freaked out with what's gone on in the last two weeks. I, I don't have the words, as I'm sure most of you don't, to really kind of express how crazily different our world is than it was two weeks ago. So there's no part of throwing this together to keep things moving, at least from my part, there's no part of it that wants to minimize the fact that this is not business as usual. I'm certainly not advocating anyone put themselves in harm's way. I'm not advocating that anyone doesn't take the, our need to social distance and protect public health as that's 100% the top priority here. And I know I've spoken to each of you guys independently and um, I know everybody here feels the same way. And, you know, realtors have really struggled over the last week, I, a week or so ago on social media. I, I know a bunch of realtors took some real negative um, social media hits for trying to conduct business. I, I think sometimes the world thinks that realtors are just about realtors. But as we all in this room know, these are actual human beings that need a place to live. Last time I checked, you know, after food, shelter is the next most basic essential need. So, you know, this whole, this whole webinar today comes from a place of making sure that if somebody's already sold their other house and they need to get in a house, that we have a house for them to go to. Or if somebody's already bought a house and they need to get their house sold or they're going to really be in, you know, tremendous financial straits, we're here to help them. So um, again, I, I'm sure I echo all of you when I say our number one goal is, is public safety and our, our number two goal is the safety of agents and all of you guys who are our, our professional partners in all of this and certainly our clients. Uh, so I just want to, I wanted to say that first and foremost. Um, what I would love to do is just kind of start with each of you guys um, one at a time. And I, I want to hear a little bit about what's going on in your world that's different than it was two weeks ago and kind of highlighting what some of the biggest challenges are. You know, I think um, next to realtors, you know, the next, the next people that jump in on these transactions usually are, are our mortgage professionals. So, you know, Matt and John, I'd love to hear from you guys what's going on, what's different, are you still getting requests for pre-approvals, what's happening with people that need to get things closed, what's not happening, what, what do we need to know and what do we need to be doing? John, you wanna jump in? Yeah, so first off, um, thanks to everyone for joining today. Uh, so um, for us, we're fortunate that our company is 100% digital and we are 100% operational. So for all the transactions that are in process, uh, it's still as crazy as it might sound business as usual. Um, there's a number of things we've had to change uh, in regards to appraisals, closings, uh, and you know, just the whole, the market itself. So Matt and I, we'll, we can split it up. If you, I can start just about the market, just to give people an idea, and then Matt can jump in with um, the appraisals and the closings. So uh, the interest rate market's been extremely volatile for the last three weeks. Um, we saw rates jump almost like a point and a half two weeks ago. Uh, and then the Fed had to jump in to buy mortgage-backed securities. So for clients that are looking for mortgages and financing under 765000 th those rates are the most attractive out there in the market. The areas that are really getting hurt are the jumbo mortgages and the what's called non-QM mortgages. So from the jumbo loans, the reason why those uh, rates have increased and aren't coming down as fast as the other ones is the large banks are completely over capacity and they're trying to slow down productivity. So if you have a client that has a pre-approval letter or has a loan in process with one of the large financial institutions, you just have to ask them you know, to get a realistic expectation if they're gonna be able to close it. Um, as for the non-QM, um, we don't see a lot of that around here, but there are a decent amount of transactions that are affected. Um, what a non-QM loan is, is it's more like the old subprime loans. And that market has completely drawn up because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac don't securitize these loans. These loans were being securitized by the private equity firms and the hedge funds. And when the stock market you know, got decimated, a lot of these players pulled out. 
So now these non-QM lenders don't have the financing and some of them have actually paused activity for, you know, two weeks, not taking new applications and pretty much telling us that loans that have already been approved, uh, they, right now they're on a standstill. Um, with that said, there are other lenders that are continuing to lend and, you know, we're just working with the title companies and the attorneys to try to make everything as seamless as possible. Thanks for that, John. Thanks, John. I'll just jump in on the processing side of things. Uh, definitely, a, I'm grateful for the fact that Guarantee Rate's been out on the forefront of having this whole digital experience. If you look at any of our websites, you can apply directly online, and now they've taken that and completed the process where you can actually close 100% virtual, virtually. So in other words, you, you don't have to attend a closing. You, they'll uh, authorize the use of the power of attorney. They'll authorize the use of the notary webcams. So both on the purchase side of things and on the refinancing side of things, they've made things a lot easier. Um, with that being said, they've always kept, in, even within our own workforce, first and, force, uh, first and foremost, the safety and the health of everybody involved in the transaction. Um, but they also realize how important it is to complete the transaction. I'll give you a quick example. You had a lot of people that were closing on the, uh, taking advantage of the recent rates in early March that may or may not have had a job impact in the latter part of March. But when you close on any given time of the month, and this is something worth noting, that if you close any time after the 6th of, the, of any given month, say you close after April 6th, your first mortgage payment's not gonna be due until June 1st. Sometimes that two month breather, that two month window, now more than ever, could play a really big role in buying yourself a little bit of time until the world get, gets back to normal, hopefully. So that's just something that I've been thinking of because I've heard back from a lot of clients that have since closed and know that they don't have a mortgage payment until May 1st uh, for any of the March closings. And it's just providing them with a lot of relief and a lot of comfort knowing that at least they bought themselves a little bit of time. Within the, uh, the infrastructure of guaranteed rate, everything from appraisals to the closing process has been revamped. So now with the appraisals, they're doing what's called alternative inspections. So they have three options. They do a virtual inspection where they're actually, the appraisers outside the home doing a physical exterior appraisal of the property. And then they're allowing them to use FaceTime, Skype, whatever type of photo, whatever type of Zoom call to, to be virtually brought through the house by the homeowner or by the seller or whoever's actually in the home. The other thing is they're actually mm -hmm. taking situations where the resident inside the home is allowed to text them the pictures of the interior while they're outside. They're doing a visual face-to-face -face through the window to acknowledge that they're on the phone and that they're speaking to one another. Mm -hmm. But Fannie and Freddie and Guaranteed Rate have come to an agreement to be able to accept some type of confirmation that they're there. The homeowner can walk throughout the house, take pictures, send it to the appraiser, and add them to their report. Um, so that's a big thing. And then in the situations where they're actually going into the house, obviously everyone's wearing protective gear and protective clothing to make it as, uh, as sterile of an environment as possible. Um, that, I mean, I think those two items between being able to adapt to the current market conditions in terms of being able to close virtually, and then the whole appraisal piece are the two ends that we needed in order to continue doing business as, not as normal, I'm not gonna say that, but with the health and safety of everyone involved, uh, taking that perspective into account and being able to continue the transaction. Because at the end of the day, it does do a lot of good. And at this time where uh, people could be impacted financially, having some type of restructuring of existing debt and taking advantage of saving hundreds you know, monthly, that makes a big deal on the bottom line. And it might be just the difference in buying yourself two months worth of mortgage payments to get through to the other side in certain situations. So. Can I ask you guys a, a mortgage related question, not necessarily just about guaranteed rate, but to, to the degree that you know in the broader world, um, I'm hearing a lot of th different things about people's mortgage payments being forgiven, deferred. Some, some of them are temporarily, some of them are going to the end. Do you guys have any, any inside knowledge for us on what people, you know, current homeowners, um, current homeowners should expect to see with respect to their mortgage payments the next few months. I just know, John, and you could chime in, I, the only information I've seen, and we have our own servicing portfolio that we do. So what they're doing is basically taking the payments and giving people, I think there's two main points. One, they're not reporting them late to the credit bureaus because 
like in 08, once you fell behind, it became a never ending, op- like you never got ahead of it. So it only did more damage. You can never even get to the other side of it because your score took such a hit on the credit side of things. Uh, and two, I think every servicer, everything I've seen is doing some type of what do we need to do to buy you some time to work things out? So I don't think there's a one plan fits all. I think it's more of a case by case, but everyone's looking to be on the same page where let's not uh, report items late. Let's figure out if we t- take three or four payments, put them on the back end. They're not forgiving the debt, but basically if you had say four months worth of mortgage payments at 3000 a month, they might take that 12,000, put it on the end of the loan term and just let you pick up business as usual come July. John, have you heard anything different? Yeah, I've heard pretty much the same stuff that Matt alluded to. The only thing I would also emphasize is when you don't want to make your mortgage payment, you have to call the servicer and they're going to ask you, how have you been impacted? Um, There's a lot of people that might be working remotely, but they're still getting their normal paychecks. So you have to show like a bona fide reason on why you need to be able to skip a mortgage payment. Because if you're working for a company that they've been generous enough to continue to pay you, they're not, they're not just going to let everybody skip a mortgage payment. It's only for those that have been affected, loss of job, you know, loss of income, and all this stuff has to be proved. So just don't think that there's going to be a blanket that everyone cannot pay their mortgage for 90 days because that would be like a, a disaster. They really have to call the servicer who get the, and ask them what their policy is and what they have to do to skip a payment or two. So I think as realtors, um and obviously most people on the call are, I think if you have clients reaching out to you that are, that are stressed financially, what, what John and Matt are saying is certainly what I've been hearing from various agents I've been talking to and some personal experiences, some investment properties and such. I do think that most lenders are being incredibly generous. So if your clients call you in a panic, make sure the first thing they do is, is speak to their lender to find out what their options are. Um, so while we're on the topics of mortgage, then let's let's kick over to to you, Lou. Most people know you. Um, Lou is appraiser extraordinaire in our area. I've been around for how long have you been doing this with us here? Um, thirty five years. So you just just getting warmed up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what what's changed in your world in the last couple of weeks, and what do realtors need to know? Uh, well, um, we've gotten busier since this crisis started. Believe it or not. So. Uh, we're thankful for the work. Um, a little tricky when we go out to the houses. People want to, you know, keep safe distance, so they move their kids into other rooms and stuff. Um, Fannie Mae just gave us the option of exterior inspections um, this week. So um, as of now, I've still been doing full inspections on all the properties. Um, I've been wearing masks and gloves and booties and wiping my hands constantly with the, you know, towelettes and disinfectant and, uh, you know, trying to keep safe distance, have the homeowners uh, turn on all the lights and open any doors so I don't have to touch any surfaces. Um, but. Uh, you know, with the uh, rate cuts, we've gotten, you know, um, we've gotten a lot of work. So just uh, we're trying to keep up, keep John happy and Matt happy and uh, the realtor clients happy. And uh, So Lou, a couple of questions. When you say that you've gotten busier, you know, the realtors on the call, we know, we often know when our clients are refinancing, but of course our world is driven mostly from new purchases. Right. When you, so when you say you're, you're busier than ever to, or I think for most realtors, it's a little bit of a surprise over the last couple of weeks, because we're assuming that while some business is going on, it certainly has slowed down to a degree. Can you right. distinguish for us how much of it has been new business versus how much of it is refis? Uh, I would say it's about 80% refinances, okay. 20% purchases. And how has that changed with COVID? If I asked you that question a month ago, would you still have been at an 80-20 eight, an 80, an 80, split? Uh, no, we were doing a lot of purchases up until the first week of March. We were, you know, I had one realtor tell me he had an open house and 300 people came to the open house. 
So it was active right up until about a week and a half ago. And then, you know, they put the brakes on everything. Okay. My other question for you, Lou, is I've been doing this long enough that I've been in downward markets before. And what I remember is the pain of having somebody pay a certain price. And then when the market's going down two weeks later, three weeks later, four weeks later, when the appraiser comes, the market value may be less. Mm. How are we as realtors to be thinking about how that might affect us when we're the, the contracts that are still getting written? What do we need to keep in mind about what may very well be yeah. a, a downward trending market? Well, I, I just ran some numbers from, uh, I had done a search in January, and then I did a research today. And uh, the only problem areas I see is um, homes priced over $2 million are taking a little bit of a hit, which, um, but anything, uh, all the other price ranges seem to be holding their values right now. Okay. Of course, the longer you go, the more activity you'll come through. But as of now, I haven't seen much of a change. Okay, that's, that's helpful, thank you. Um, um, we have one question um, from um, a member of the audience. Uh, based on the information coming from Jeffrey Otto yesterday and the uncertainty of the economy, do you <laughs> think that it, this is going to impact appraisals both going forward and those that already happened, will homes need to be reappraised before closing? Uh, I think it's too early to say, but it probably will impact the values. Um, but to say by how much, nobody knows at this point. I mean, things could turn around very quickly or things could lag for several months. So at this point, uh, we just don't have enough activity to say. Okay. Luke, what, what has to happen in order for you to start getting called to reappraise? Um, what has to happen? Yeah, well, historically, <laughs> well, historically normally what's, the, what's the lender go If they don't close in, uh, I don't know, John, is it six, is it 90 days? Maybe? I think they're good for, I think the appraisals are good for 120 days. Yeah, if they don't close within 120 days, then they ask us to do what they call a recertification of value. So we go back to the property, make sure it's still in the same condition, and then do a search and see, you know, if the market has changed. So uh, maybe 120 days from now, I'll know better, you know. How so it's, it, it, it sounds out. like you're you're saying. <laughs> as far as reappraisals, that's business as normal for what you know, you're not seeing a potentially downward ticking market creating a, a new need to, to alter the process. Is that, is that what you guys have all seen in the past, John and Matt? Yeah, I mean, it's very, I mean, the only time a, an appraisal needs a research, as Lou said, if it's 120 days, that, that's, a very, that's very rare that that occurs. Okay. Now, what, what do we need to keep in mind about it with people losing jobs, et cetera? Yeah, that's a big piece. Uh, one of the things that comes up is that we're gonna, we have to verify employment within five days of closing on every single transaction. So if you have loans that are closing or purchased uh, contracts that are set to close in April and people's employment are iffy, um, it's something that's gonna come to the top one way or another. And if the borrower doesn't say anything, we're still going to find out. And usually if you wait till we find out, it's five days with the, before the transaction is supposed to go to the closing table. So if someone loses their job or is laid off and you can't qualify that borrower without the use of their income, we're not going to be able to close. So, and that's if you're furloughed, laid off, any, however, you, uh, however you look at it. So that's a big piece of the puzzle. And it's something that you probably, the realtor might want to be in constant contact or at least have a, have a conversation with the borrower about how, how this has impacted their employment and whatnot. If it's business as usual, just working from home, or if they're getting the sense that, hey, they're laid off for the time being, should I say anything to the lender? It's gonna come out in the wash, so to say. Okay, that's helpful, thanks. 
One, so once, I'm ahead, sorry Maria. to interrupt. One more question uh, regarding appraisals. This one's directed at Lou. Um, if you aren't able to get into the home, uh, will you be able to use floor plans, photos, uh, virtual tours provided by the realtors, or are you required to be on the premises and in direct contact with someone inside the home who has provided photos? I think we kind of touched upon that a little bit. It depends bit. on the lender. Um, any transaction that's gone through Fannie Mae, they'll accept uh, homeowners photos. But um, most of my clients are they're saying they want the full inspections done. Um, or they're going strictly exterior where we just do uh, you know an exterior inspection. So it's kind of split right now, but I think I think everybody's gonna have to go to exterior only at some point until this virus is cleared up. Okay. Um, Evan, let's move on to you. Evan Dragman, so many uh, agents know you. You've, I know you're a young guy, but you've also been doing this for a while now. So uh, you've seen some stuff. What, what has your, your last two weeks been like? What are you seeing people doing to add to, to, add to contracts? Let's talk about deals dying. What are you seeing? So, um, you know, while we've all been doing this a long time, this is certainly nothing like anyone has any, ever seen before. I'm really coming across it in two different ways as, as the lawyer. Um, number one is contracts that are already done, transactions in process. And number two is transactions that are not quite either out of attorney review or the deal is, is finalized yet. Um, for deals that are in process already, until the government makes a decision to really halt all business, things are moving forward. Everything in a transaction can be done. Um, it's got some of the things like appraisals, um, like inspections, which we'll get to are more difficult. There's no doubt. Um, but everything is moving forward. Mortgages are moving forward. Inspections are, and closings are all happening. So there is room for transactions to get completed in this environment. Um, there are situations where I've had buyers call me and have a change of heart with everything going on. How to get just simply concerned about everything going on and not ready to move forward. Um, and you know, the nice thing about being a lawyer is that sometimes there is no definitive answer for that. Um, a con the way the contract is written and the specific wording that was agreed upon in attorney review will really dictate the rights of the parties. There's no black and white answer. For example, different mortgage contingency will um, give you a different result on the same set of facts. Meaning if a buyer is moving forward with a transaction and does lose their job and cannot close, some contracts are written that would protect the buyer. Some contracts are written that would not. It really go comes back to the specific wording. If the wording in a contract um, in the attorney review letter and in the contract specifically states that upon issuance of a commitment, that contingency is thereby satisfied the courts will generally say that the buyer has no recourse if they lose their commitment. On the other hand, there, is, there are a lot of attorneys, myself included, that include language that say, if a commitment is withdrawn through no fault of a buyer, the buyer is allowed to cancel. And if that language makes it through the contract and the buyer um, does get denied from their mortgage after a good faith effort, they would get protection. Um, there is no, in most contracts that have been done that were out of attorney review as of two or three weeks ago, there is no specific clause allowing a buyer any type of out because of the current situation. Now, going to transactions that are still being negotiated, a lot of buyers and quite frankly, some sellers are asking for um, contingencies that if the um, even if the non-essential business closure continues, they can get out of the deal. A lot of, um, especially older clients, aren't yes. particularly interested in moving right now. They don't want um, to get involved in that. So there's been a lot of, a couple of use and occupancies have been negotiated at the last minute, um, and a couple contingencies permitting buyers and or sellers to cancel a deal if uh, situation, certainly if the situation gets worse, and if the situation continues. Um, 
th this kind of well, I want to hear from Tom Dab next to hear about inspections. But you know, Tom Tom does great inspections and hands them to us as realtors and attorneys, and we get to duke it all out. I mean, what what are you expecting to see with uh, inspection negotiations, Evan, as the market gets probably more favorable po more favorable for buyers? So right now we're kind of in a period where the inspection negotiations and a lot of negotiations are the leverages the leverages beneath people's feet are changing daily um some buyers are extremely eager to move forward with the transaction quickly because they want to get into a house and you know in their in their particular situation the inspections are getting negotiated really easy because they'll accept everything certain other buyers are looking for exits out and those inspections are just quite frankly harder so in the, in the immediate term, while the leverages are changing and people's motivations are changing because of the you know, outside world forces, the negotiations are largely the same. You know, I, on a, on a, without all the global pandemic going on, I have clients asking for crazy things all the time. And I have clients accepting crazy things all the time. So from, there's a certain element that that is simply continuing with different leverages. What I expect to see in the future is really in any changing market, buyers will probably have more leverage. More sellers will be happy to get a buyer and be willing to make more of the repairs that maybe three or four months ago they would be declining to make. Sort of off the topic of COVID, I believe, but yet timely. I think we're just about to the end of the tax appeal um, time frame. Evan, do you want to throw in something about that? Well, if, look, from, from a real estate, from a realtor perspective, tax appeals are, are a great tool, especially in this time period of less contact with clients to reach out to clients and make sure that you, as realtors, you guys keep on your clients, um, keep on your clients' minds. So it's a great way, every, you know, look, everyone is a little bit more concerned about their finances than they were two or three weeks ago. Mm. So for anyone to get an opportunity to save a couple thousand dollars a year in property taxes, in a good environment, people jump on that. Certainly in a uh, conservative environment, people are a little bit more eager. So it is a good um, idea for real estate agents to be aware of it, um, be aware of tax appeals, how they work. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, and, and really, you know, hit your clients during this kind of slower downtime as a way to be their real estate expert. Evan, Deadline on that is, is the 31st, Evan? 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 March 31st or April 1st? The end of this month, end of March, um, it has been extended because of all the closures. So there are, um, tax appeals are going to be delayed. Resolution of tax appeals are going to be delayed. Um, the county tax board is in some counties closed and in some counties operating at uh, reduced capacity. So there will be a slowdown there. Yeah, Peter, you, what, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, I just want to ask Evan a question. Evan, how, have you had anyone address this new addendum to the contract about the COVID-19? No, um, I have, I've seen it on paper. I haven't seen it in practice yet. So um, it hasn't really been come up. I've had attorneys in, in various deals that I'm working on. We've drafted our own um, COVID contingencies. But um, I know that there was that uh, an addendum to the contract that's being promulgated by the realtor board. I, I don't know how widespread that is in use yet. Okay. Uh, Tom, let's kick it over to you. Sure. What, what's happening differently in your world as far as inspections go? The whole, the whole environment, right? How we approach, how we enter, how we discuss, the whole thing is evolving now. But it's certainly inspections are going forward. Um, I'm relatively busy keeping consistent. These are deals that probably were set you know, a couple of weeks ago at most, and they're still moving forward. The big difference is no one's there. I'm the only one there. You know, I'm, I'm led into the house. Mm -hmm. I'm protected, protecting myself as, every, as all of us are, right? With gloves and masks and everything and taking lots of precautions. I'm not taking any risks at all. I want everybody to stay safe, um, not only living in their house, right? But getting into that house and before. So, yeah, it's... I'm presenting myself to clients and saying, listen, this is the way it's got to be. And everybody understands that and respects it. And if they don't, I'm not working with them. But it's pretty mutual. So while you say that the ones, the, most of the inspections you've been doing may have been set up before our world changed, 
Give mm -hmm. me a sense of the flow that have been newly initiated over the last week and a half. There's um, people that are not out of attorney review yet. And we're just waiting to see what happens. And I'm, I, I'm pretty confident that they're going to get out of attorney review based on the conversations we've had. Um, everybody's motivated. They know this is, this is a, it's a major hiccup in our life. Right. And uh, so it's just one day at a time. Yeah. Great. Uh, you know, I'm always interested to share with my agents what other people are hearing about the flow of new business. I love it. Every once in a while, Tom, you, you send me a text and let me know what kind of calls you're getting. But I, I spoke to John and Matt about pre-approvals the other day, which was particularly of interest to me. And inspections are particularly of interest because I, I, I do want to see how much new business is going to be going, uh, going on. Um, Peter, can we, can we switch to you? I saw you, you just turned video off. Are you still uh -huh. you there? I'm going awesome. to jump in with a question, if it's okay, okay. for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, with an inspection, certainly um, having the buyers with you for context on a lot of the issues is important. How are you handling that in the age of not dealing with them face-to-face? -face? Are you having yeah, that's, calls with them afterwards? That's, Evan, that's a, that's a great point. So what I've asked clients is, listen, if you want to um, do a video, let me do the inspection. Let me get through all the issues. I'll take my phone and we'll do a Skype. We'll do a FaceTime. I've done this already. It kind of brings them into the picture. They can see things firsthand. I'll take my camera and say, look, this is what I'm talking about here. You're going to see it. You're going to read about it twice. You know, or maintenance issues. I'm always big about talking about maintenance. Um, it's up to them. Two clients have done that. Others have elected just to read the report and ask questions later. I'm of the opinion. I like to be with people. I'm a people person. I want you to come with me and see and hear and learn. Um, that's not available right now. And that's, that's the way we're going to have to conduct business for a while. Yeah. All right. Let, we'll see if Peter, if Peter jumps back in, I'd love to go to title next. I know he's multitasking and busy. So, uh, Peter, Hi, Sean. What, I'm good. How are you? Thanks. Thanks I'm so good. much for being here. My pleasure. What, what are you, what are you seeing getting these things closed? Well, we're, we're having our closings. The closings are happening on the um, existing business in our pipeline. We have, I think we have 12 today. We got 20 tomorrow. Uh, we're being very flexible with the people on how to accomplish the closing. Whether um, we're trying to limit the people coming into the closing, just the buyer, the buyer's attorney wants to come, the buyer's attorney and the purchasers. That way we're limiting the amount of people that are coming into our offices. Some people do not want to come into the offices and we're actually closing in the parking lot where they're staying in the car and they're, we're feeding documents between the people back and forth. Um, the bigger issue that's coming down is all of the county courthouses are closed to the public, which includes all of my title searchers. I was on a Zoom call over the weekend. We had John Bramnick on the call and we sent him an email and asked him uh, what he could do to get our searchers back into the courthouse so that they can still search. Because we can still search online, but take for instance, in the county that I sit, Essex County. Essex County, we're only allowed to search online for 19 years. 19 years does not help me for easements and restrictions and things of that sort. So your agents who are doing a lot of listings, they really should ask the um, sellers to get a copy of their survey and mostly important, a copy of their title insurance policy. That's key because once we have a copy of the title insurance policy, Instead of having to go back 60 years, we go forward from the policy because that policy under exception will give me all the easements and restrictions and I can go forward. So as long as that person bought from 2001 forward, I can finish the search and we can have the closing. Every other county is either 25 to 30 years, so we're pretty good there, except for Hunterdon County, which has no online access at all. So if you're doing a closing in Hunterdon County, most likely we're not going to be able to get the searches done for you because it's shut down completely. 
okay? Um, you're all, I'm sure, hearing a lot of information about RON, Remote Online Notarization, okay? Mm -hmm. The bill has not been signed by the governor yet. And there was a new addendum, new exception to the bill that I saw this morning, that it's totally for notaries. So that means an attorney in the state of New Jersey cannot do a RON. They're, they're accepted out of that. I hope that changes. But as of right now, we cannot use uh, remote online notaries, not yet anyway, but I, I can see this is coming down the pike and it will be here hopefully sooner than later. Um, with regard to the, does someone have a question? Uh, Peter, can you just talk about how the remote online pro notary process does work? My understanding is that it, you still require a document to be faxed back and forth or emailed back and forth. It's all done, most of it is all done by video, Evan, where we actually, they, the uh, who's ever executing documents is showing us or showing the notary uh, their license to make sure we have the right person there. Uh, we're taking pictures of all those things. Then the once it's all executed, they have to send us those original documents. So that now, as Evan knows, because Evan used to work for us, uh, we used to hand deliver every document to the courthouse. So we made sure that your deed and mortgage got recorded properly. We're not allowed to do that anymore. So we have now contracted with an outside vendor called Simple File where we basically are doing the county clerk's work. We load it all up, we upload it to, we upload a simple file. They then take that deed and mortgage and they file it and we hold on to the original. So when, you, when your customers get back their original deed, it's not gonna have a recording stamp on it. We'll send them a copy along with it that shows that your document was recorded and they get their original document back. Same thing for the, for the mortgage. We'll, we'll send them back their original mortgage and won't have a stamp on it, but we'll attach a copy of a sheet that was, that was sent to us showing that the mortgage was recorded. So these are things that, I mean, to me, the way this whole market is going, the closing is gonna to be totally online. You know, no one's gonna to have to meet anymore to do a closing. And to me, that's the, way, that's the trend. I mean, I don't really like it because I'm a little bit, uh, I'm old school. I've been only doing this for 40 years. So I kind of like having people in the room signing, but that's not the way of the future. And if you don't change, you're gonna be a dinosaur and you're gonna become extinct. So we're going that route where it's gonna to be totally a remote closing. I mean, uh, John from um, from the mortgage company, they are ready, they're almost there because they have that express pack, that flash closing, where the majority of the documentation is all signed by DocuSign, right? except for the mortgage and note, which still has to be wet signatures and a few other documents. So I see that's where we're going in this industry is totally online. And I, I believe it's gonna be a it's gonna be a benefit because the hardest thing to do for the, for a title and settlement company is schedule closings to make sure everyone's available. So that will take that issue away. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? About hey, Peter, talk a little bit about CFOs. What are you seeing? CFOs um, in Westfield there's an affidavit that the seller is signing saying that they took care of this. Well, it's, 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 that's not for a CO, that's just for a smoke certificate. And they uh, signed the affidavit that they did everything they were supposed to do. And they give you the, they give you the smoke certificate. Um, some of the towns are allowing you to, to take certain pictures of the house and you give it to the inspectors. But from what I'm hearing from a lot of people right now is the inspectors are not going out to the houses. Yeah. They're stopping. No one wants it. It's everyone's thinking the most important thing is everybody's safety. And I totally, I totally understand that. Um, so I'm not sure exactly. Every town is a little bit different. 
And the problem is everything changes now hourly. I'm getting memos from every different town as to who's doing this, who's doing that. So it makes it very difficult because sometimes I say things in a, in a Zoom meeting and when I get off the meeting, it changed already. Yeah. You know, so it, it makes it very, very, very difficult to know everything that's going on because things are constantly changing. I'm going to jump in this, on the CL and smoke issue just for a quick second. Go right um, ahead. Evan. The, the, you know, some towns require a CL and a smoke detector certificate. Some towns only the smoke detector certificate. The smoke detector certificate is a state uh, requirement and the state regulations permit affidavits. So m many of the towns that did not have a separate CO requirement and only a smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector requirement are switching to the affidavits. Um, the towns that require CO affidavits, COs, certificate of occupancy or certificate of continued occupancy, um, those are all local requirements. Those are not state promulgated. So the lo each local government is kind of figuring it out on the fly. And as Peter said, those towns are changing daily, sometimes hourly for, for you know, keeping everyone safe and, and far apart. So a lot of the towns, some of the towns are quite honestly just waiving the requirement in the short term. Um, and some of the towns just don't know, don't even know what they're doing. So you, it's important from every real estate agent perspective, call the town, see what information you can get as early as you can get it. The one town that's given us the hardest time so far was West Orange. They, in fact, said it was a, they had the inspection and the inspector said, don't close before I give you the certificate or else we'll find you. So that's what I'm saying. This, everything is changing very quickly with all of this stuff. To go back to what um, your mortgage guys were talking about, we had four deals fall apart because of the, uh, the QM type of mortgages and the deals are not coming back to us. Unless of course they, they get a bid on these, um, on, on these type of programs again in Wall Street. So just make sure all your people are Fannie, Freddie, governmental mortgages, uh, VA mortgages. Those are the ones that are gonna go through. You know, I, I want to kick it over to, to Dan Morris of, of Visual. Most of us realtors, you know, Dan, you're a huge part of what we do. And we've mostly been talking about getting deals that are already under contract closed, but there are still people out there that need to get things that they hadn't gotten on the market on. So everybody's really being creative with what they're doing. And certainly your end of things, no exception. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what your world's been looking like? Yeah, so it's definitely been a change um, for us in the past two weeks. Um, we were doing close to 200 listings a week, um, no more than two weeks ago. And I would say we're down about 70, 75% in um, listings. And what we're seeing now is a lot of demand for Matterport 3D tours. Um, 3D tours for us have been, um, a month ago, I would tell you that people weren't going to do Matterport at all. And I would sell you my cameras, but now, um, it gives people a opportunity to view a house safely. And, um, it really helps us kind of go as best as business as usual as we possibly can during this time. So, um, for us as a company, what we're trying to navigate, just like um, Evan and uh, Peter were saying, is that things are changing for us daily. Um, what we're able to do, what um, areas that we're able to go. We're no longer able to serve New York. I'm not sure if you have any, um, if anybody on here has New York listings, New York City listings, but we're not able to service anything in New York City or New York State. So um, as a company, what we're doing is because we want to keep everybody um operating is we are um opening up our photographers to do Matterport tours and we are um practicing social distancing and we're really really strict on like our guidelines on what each one of our photographers is willing to do um for instance um most of our photographers have gloves if not all of them they're wearing gloves when they go on site 
Um, they're taking their shoes off before they go into a house. Um, we really prefer that homeowners are out of the house so that we can practice that, uh, that uh, separation of space. And um, we are also just daily um, in the loop with all of our photographers regarding their availability. Because that's also been a problem that we have found with our crew is we had 25 photographers working with us and now we're down to like 10. And it's because a lot of them just maybe don't feel comfortable. One of my top photographers said his father had COPD and he just didn't feel comfortable uh, going out on photo shoots. So we really have to practice social distancing. We have to practice uh, not touching anything when we're inside of a home. Not only for that to be safety for your clients for the realtors and for our photographers but also for the safety of the next appointment um if we practice that every single time we're going out on the field then we'll be able to make sure that everybody is safe who my photographer meets and then we're in just constant contact like our photographers if they have a cough even if it's allergies um we tell them to stay home uh luckily no nobody has had any issues so far um, but our, our crew is very vigilant on the safety of themselves and of the homeowners. So if like anybody uh, breaks that social distancing protocol, our photographers, even if they feel safe, they're told that they can leave the house, no questions asked. Um, and it's been good so far, um, but we're finding, I, I know that I'm kind of the guy that kind of tells you when the listings are about to come out. Um, I would say right now, um, more like 50 to 60% of our jobs right now are people trying to do Matterport tours on existing listings. They're trying to do virtual open houses. They're trying to do videos, more interactive ways to get their house exposure in this new climate where we're probably down 40% of the listings are really uh, our new listings. And I feel that a lot of people are in a little bit of a lull right now when I'm talking to a lot of realtors from, um, Bergen County all the way down to Cape May. They're saying that my clients are in a holding pattern. We want to see what's going on. So that's what we have found personally. Just just go over a couple of your gut numbers yeah. there again. I, I missed it. So I understand that you're matterporting a lot of things mm -hmm. that were already listed. What did you say you thought your new business was down? I would say, okay, um, we were doing about 160 listings two weeks ago and we were on pace to probably hit around 200 listings a week um in your area you know i would say about 70 percent of that was it was in our area i would say right now we're down we're doing this week we're doing i got the numbers in front of me we're doing 70 listings and i would say at least 50 percent of that is matterporting existing listings so i would say only like 30 listings are coming on and they're spread out all over like i have jobs in manalp and baskin bridge hillsboro so like it's really kind of put a pause on the market a little bit and the top producers that i've been talking to from the surrounding areas have said well we're just gonna kind of put a pause on a lot of things and we're gonna see we're gonna wait the market out maybe a week or two so our Aprils are starting to get booked and there's a lot of confidence from um, potential sellers. They're saying like, oh, it's going to be a lull. We'll be able to do this. And I think as like, as a group, if we can practice like as much business as usual as possible as an industry, I think we'll be good. But yeah, it's been down um, a considerable amount. I would say like 30, 40 listings this week are, are going to be new listings that are going to be coming on. Okay. That's helpful. Maria, do you have some questions? Yes, yeah, so, so there's a couple of questions in the queue. Um, the most recent one, Dan, was um, in your direction. I guess some um, agents wanted to know if they already have old photos, you know, what other sort of, I guess, more virtual media can yeah. be created from that or would it be a matter of having to actually video at the property? We'd have to video at the property. Um, you know, we're willing to work with anybody in this climate um, when it comes to like, if it's non VMV material, like I do understand that, like a lot of photography companies have decided to shut down um, and we are still operational. So we can take non VMV stuff and put it into our um, property websites. But when it comes to Matterport, you can't take a photo, like photos from a listing and say, all right, let's stitch it together and make a virtual tour. That's not how that works. 
Uh, Matterport is a 3D scan where the camera has to come in and you actually have to scan each uh, part of the house in order to do it. So, um, you know, if a house has already been photographed, you don't have Matterport, you would have to ask your homeowners to open back, uh, open the house back up to us to do the 3D scan. Um, and and I, I would just couch it in a way that it's like, look, if we can get foot traffic, we can get web traffic instead of getting foot traffic in your house, we can run, you know, buyers, you can say we can walk through a house no problem without having to step in. Maybe you can convince your homeowners. We've been finding, um, especially on our bookings now, a lot of bookings are coming in, but then a lot of people are jumping out. Like a lot of homeowners are saying, oh, I don't want anybody in my house right now. So um, that's, that's one thing that we're finding. So that's how, uh, that's what we could do with existing properties. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions also here relating to um, COVID-19 addendums on contracts. So I, I take it that would be an Evan question here. If you wanting to know what exactly the, any new forms or addendums that they should be looking out for for buyers and sellers, as well as if it's anticipated that these will be ongoing or will they, you know, at one point stop? So there is a new Najar rider that um, was issued for the situation. Um, I, I've seen it in passing. I haven't reviewed it yet. Will it be used widely? Quite honestly, that's up to you guys. Um, there are a whole wide range of riders available that are used inconsistently. Um, you know, there is a condominium rider. It's not used on every condo deal that comes across my desk. I, I'm sure most attorneys would say the same thing. So whether or not the new rider is really going to gain widespread attention is is unknown to me and is really up to the real estate agents what what is happening whether or not the rider is included with the with the contract is that attorneys during attorney review are adding their own contingencies and the contingencies are are drafted and they can be kind of creative anything that the clients want this is such a this is such uncharted waters that different clients simply have different needs and different concerns. So it's important for an attorney to at least listen to what those concerns are of a buyer and a, or a seller and draft language that gives them comfort in their concerns. Some buyers want the transaction to move forward no matter what. Some sellers want to be get out of a deal if they can't move, if they can't find a mover. So you know, we're, we're really dealing in a time with shifting, um, shifting priorities, sh shifting strategies by buyers and sellers and different need than our, you know, than in a normal time. So, you know, there's really not a simple blanket answer. The only simple blanket answer I can provide is if the government um, makes the determination that all businesses are really shut down, that is going to prevent transactions from happening and closings from happening and will give the parties some legal cover to at the very least toll transactions delay um, and possibly even terminate if, if depending on how long that lasts but under the current set of governmental regulations um, it really is left to the attorneys to navigate and negotiate what that final contingency is going to be Maria, any other questions? Um, the few that are re you know related. Um, one other one is any other ancillary services in terms of let's say movers. I know they're not on this panel, um, but any other services that you have either come into contact that you've experienced any difficulty in locating or um, you know that you've heard deals where people are having trouble contracting that you can advise so agents can advise their clients. Like movers, for instance. Well, I can speak from personal experience that there are some uh, contractors who are not available and not doing work, um, not providing estimates, because um, you know contractors very often do have to get to a house to give estimates, and a lot of them just aren't doing that. Um, it's different for a job than you know. A lot of contractors, um, appraisers, inspectors are used to going to homes all the time. Um, people don't want to do that for, especially as a, in a contractor's position where that business is not assured to them. So that getting estimates as part of inspection negotiations are definitely slowing down. Um, 
you know, a roof inspection is no problem. Those are those you can get out pretty easily still. Mm -hmm. um, internal HVAC, electrician, plumbing, those are going to be, those are definitely, I'm seeing at least a little bit more difficult. Um, I don't know about movers. <laughs> I, 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 I have heard I anecdotally of people having um, movers doing quotes virtually. Mm -hmm. Um, one last question, um, and I think we're almost out of time too. Um, question, will rate locks be extended past 90 days? That's the extent of the question, but I'm, I'm guessing it's more of a generalized question. Yeah. Uh, John, I, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are, but my thought is that uh, everything's done on probably a case by case basis. A lot of times when you lock a loan, you have the ability sometimes to buy yourself a little bit more time. I just know that guarantee rates perspective is that we're going to do everything we can to minimize the damage uh, in terms of rates. Sometimes it's out of our control because it's locked with a specific uh, program. But I would say that anything that can be done will be done to minimize any type of added expense or stress throughout the process. Yeah, and we're not allowed to do short term rate locks anymore. So the company is you know, advising us to build in an extra 15 to 30 days just to play it safe. Guys, I, I cannot, oh, go ahead, Evan. I'm sorry, uh, John, you mean 15 to 30 days after the scheduled closing date? Correct, so if I have something that's scheduled to close, say April 30th, if it's a new transaction, I, we would lock it till like May 30th, just to give an extra 30 days to protect the client. I, I want to thank all of you guys for, for coming on. You know, us realtors are some of, some of us lying awake in bed at night trying to figure out what's going to go on. And so it's really helpful to have a lot of the key uh, players in one room, sort of, at one time so we can hear from all of you. I'm going to get a, an email together that uh, subsequent to the invitation that I sent out to everybody, just so that everybody has all of you guys' contact information. Um, but thank you all so much for coming. Everybody stay safe out there. You too. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.